Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the campus of Tabor College in Hillsborough, Kansas, for tonight's KCAC matchup. The Blue Jays welcome their guests, the McPherson College Bulldogs, for a great night of college basketball. My name is Adam Suderman, and I had the pleasure of bringing you tonight's game here on the Tabor College Blue Jay Network. The Blue Jays enter tonight's game with a record of 5-9 and nine overall, 2-6 and six in conference play. And the Bulldogs are 11-3 and three and 6-2 six and two in conference play. So we'll give you here the starting lineups uh, for tonight's game. We appreciate you guys joining us. And uh, sorry for joining you here just a tad late. But we are here and we're ready to go. So for the visiting Bulldogs... We have a 5'11 sophomore guard, Curtis Rose, a 6'6 junior from the Bahamas, number 11, Colin Storr, a 6'1 junior guard from Manhattan, Kansas, Owen Braxmeyer, a 6'9 junior from Redondo Beach, California, Quinn Collins, a 6'3 junior from Midwest City, Oklahoma, Antonio Watson. So again, for the Bulldogs, that is Rose, Storr, Braxmeyer, Collins, and Watson. And here where we will have the Blue Jays starting lineups on the screen as they are also announced here by PA announcer Nate Howard. For the Blue Jays, a 6'1 junior guard from Synthport, Louisiana, Caleb Crane. A 6'6 freshman guard from Wilmington, North Carolina, Jack Both. A 6'3 freshman guard from Heston, Kansas, Jake Proctor. A 6'7 sophomore forward from McKinney, Texas, Thatcher McClure. And a 6'8 junior forward from Tomball, Texas, Kenyon Holcomb. Again, as you see on the screen for the Blue Jays, Crane, both Proctor, McClure, and Holcomb. <laughs> Apologies there. So, uh, yeah. So both of these teams, um, for McPherson uh, in particular, Bulldogs on a, a major upswing this season uh, here with already double-digit wins and coming off a pretty massive upset, knocking off the nationally ranked Southwestern Mound Builders 86-83 on January 6th. The Blue Jays are looking to get back on the winning side. Uh, they have oh, only the lone... Only one conference home win coming on November 29th against the uh, against Avila. They also won their first game of this spring semester at Friends, 63-59. So, see if the Blue Jays can add to their overall win total and get back to the their winning ways here on their home floor. So, for the tip, it is McClure and Collins, and the Bulldogs will have opening possession. Watson here, guard, guarded by Holcomb, over to Rose, and Storr on the block. Storr is a load, as you can see already, grabbing an offensive rebound and getting the putback. Averaging a double-double here uh, to not start the season, but here in the midway point of the season at 16.1 points per game and 10.2 rebounds. And there is Crane immediately answering to tie this game at two apiece. So again, the Bulldogs here uh, off to an impressive start, six and two in conference play, eleven and three overall. Just uh, a major statement by them as they look to assert themselves atop the conference. And like I mentioned just a few minutes ago, coming off a massive win, knocking off the nationally ranked Mound Builders here in their last game. So we'll see for the Blue Jays. You know, we've seen uh, shades of this team coming together. You know, this is. A very young team still, so uh, a little bit of a work in progress, but there's no denying that the talent is there. So see this uh, if these guys are able to string together 40 minutes here tonight against a really talented Bulldog squad. So Rose misses the the uh, three, rebounded by Storr. Now it's Braxmeyer as he finds Collins on the block. Collins with the right hook, misses, rebound to Thatcher McClure. Proctor to set possession for the Blue Jays. Both with the three. His short bounces off to the hands of Colin Storr. Both, uh, even in his freshman campaign, one of the best three-point shooters in the K KCAC, shooting over 41% overall and 40% in conference play. 
So Crane will look to set the Blue Jay offense to McClure, who finds Proctor on the wing, who will drive on Braxmeyer, miss. Holcomb with the offensive rebound, out to McClure. Considering driving, but the Blue Jays will reset their offense and both to the basket. And he will score. So 4-2 Blue Jays here in the opening two and a half minutes of tonight's game. Again, for those who might be joining us here a few minutes into tonight's game, my name's Adam Suderman. I do quite a number of the men's games here for Tabor and uh, always fun to bring you another night of Blue Jay basketball. Crane pressing on Watson is able to score at the rim. One of the Caleb Crane specialties. You get number zero in transition and uh, the, the shooting percentage, I don't know exactly what he is shooting when he gets in transition, but I have to imagine it is a very high clip. Holcomb guarding the smaller rows. You got a mismatch on the perimeter means you got a mismatch on the paint as Crane has to body the 6-6 six, six store. So cuts into the Blue Jays lead here 6-4 to four, as Tabor takes over. You know, you look at some of the Blue Jays games this year, you see just a few possessions away from some different results. Uh, I can go through some of those games here after this shot. McClure with a tough runner, but Holcomb's able to get the offensive rebound, but Storr knocks it loose and Rose pushing it for McPherson. Collins looked like he thought about a three, instead will drive it on the Blue Jay sophomore. He, it's a hook off the, off the glass, an impressive shot there from the Bulldog big man. So like I was saying with Tabor, uh, you know, some conference games that awfully close, you know, a, a three-pointer at the buzzer losing to York uh, against Sterling, a game that uh, came down to the wire in the second half. Oklahoma Wesleyan caught fire from three-point range, but still just an 11-point loss there. So you don't always want to put stock into just moral victories. But as I was saying before, the Blue Jays have shown signs to be a really competitive and great basketball team. They're just uh, looking to put two complete halves together. Again, some impressive quickness there from Collins as he's able to beat McClure to the basket. That will be Thatcher McClure's first foul of tonight's game. That's his first. Team's first. Quinn Collins at the line. Shooting two. Collins with two free throws. The first free throws of tonight's game. Hits the first coming into tonight. Actually, just his seventh free throw of the season. Uh, three for six before that shot. Two of the better free throw shooters in the conference on this Bulldogs roster with Rose shooting uh, an almost 90% and Antonio Watson in conference play shooting 87%. So a team that knows how to get to the line uh, early and often. So they're able to stop the uh, Collins hook there. And I think we're, think we're going to get Store on the reach. So not an ideal foul uh, here for Colin Store, someone who is just such a ma massive piece of what the Bulldogs want to do. You never want to see a foul that far from the basket. So he'll take a seat. So new on the court now for the Bulldogs, Seth Madrin, Jamil Hardaway, and Jerome Mabry. So Tabor now will head to the line oh, here. It's McClure. Looks to jump on the scoreboard for the first time tonight. McClure just uh, putting it mildly, saying how important he is to this Tabor offense. Leading and rebounding. <clears throat> Excuse me. Leading and rebounding. Leading and scoring. And also one of the top three-point shooters on the team, uh, even at his size, at six foot seven. So, just a vital portion of this uh, Tabor attack. Started a little bit slow from three-point range after a, a great freshman season from deep, but now is sh shooting forty percent in, in KCAC play. The Collins hook shot—we've seen it a lot. Unable to convert on that attempt, and Crane looks to push and scores. As we said, Crane will look for every opportunity to push it. And here he is now with six early points as Tabor takes a 10-7 lead. 
Hardaway into Voth's body. I'm not sure if we're going to get Voth or Aboba possibly on a reach here. As, yes, James Aboba also on the court for the first time for the Blue Jays. We are going to, it is going to be on both. His first, team second. Cade Hemmert will see the four for the first time. The six foot four senior from Oakley, Kansas. Giving McClure a, what I'm sure will be a quick breather. Braxmeyer, you got to give a hand it to him. He may not show it to you in height, but is actually one of the top rebounders in the conference at 7.1 boards per game. So again, a reach here from McPherson, far from the basket. So getting a little, getting a little handsy in transition, and Braxmeyer will pick up his first team third. That to check in for the Bulldogs is a uh, six foot five freshman from Freeport, Bahamas, LeBron Wilson. So you have to like the Blue Jays shot selection, but of course, when you get crane in transition, you're going to get a high percentage shot here as a, a bow was able to claim the offensive rebound, but Madrid tips it out of the hands of Crane as the Bulldogs push. Tabor look, wanted, I think, a, a uh, turnover there, but a miss nonetheless as Tabor takes over on possession. So Jack Voth here finds Aboba at the elbow, and he will drive, and we will get an offensive foul. On the Tabor Senior. That's it. And for the Blue Jays for the first time, number five, Jade Miller, a six foot freshman from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So McPherson basketball here as Tabor has led for the extent of tonight's game here over the first seven minutes. Three point lead here. As they set their defense, an impressive take there from Mabry as he's able to hit, cutting Tabor's lead to one. So on the court here, just again, show some of the Blue Jays youth. You do have two seniors in a Boba and Hemmerd, but you've got three freshmen with Miller, Proctor, and both. What a feed from the Boba as he finds the cutting Jack both for the two-handed slam. Pushing Tabor's lead back to three here in the early part of tonight's game. A great play there as Rose tried to go up strong, but Miller able to strip it as he goes up for the shot. Rose looking to return the favor and tip a loose ball, but Miller's able to keep hold of possession. Coach Warren probably awfully pleased here again as Tabor's Done a good job defensively here on what has been a potent Bulldogs offense as Miller hits the jumper to give Tabor its biggest lead of tonight's game at 14 to 9. I think we're going to get a step out of bounds here from Mabry, giving the Blue. Excuse me there, giving the Blue Jays the basketball. Back in for the Blue Jays, McClure, Crane, and Holcomb. Good to see Coach Warren back on the court side. Uh, I know the first game out of Christmas break, he was home uh, sick. So it's good to see him back uh, leading the Blue Jays tonight. McPherson doing everything it can to get in the paint and proving it worthwhile there. So LeBron Wilson's able to hit the short jumper in the lane. So Tabor now a 14-11 lead here as we pass eight minutes into tonight's game. Talking about one of those players that just continues to get better for the Blue Jays. Holcomb is, Holcomb is exactly that there. Uh, now averaging almost double digits. 7.7 .7 points per game, but n almost double digits in conference play. Another, and right as I'm saying that, another Bulldog turnover as Hardaway steps out of bounds. Cade Hemmer to inbound the ball for the Blue Jays.
another five point lead here for Tabor as we close in on the opening 10 minutes of the first half. Tabor getting just about any look at once. They're shooting at almost a 60% clip there. McClure able to get a high percentage lick, but misses. I think we're going to get a block here on Hemmer. So we get two free throws here from Jerome Mabry. Toast on the Blue Jays, number 15, Kent Polko. That's in first, team sport. Jerome Mabry at the line, shooting two. Mabry, a six foot senior guard from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, here with two free throws. Mabry, one of the Bulldogs' top free throw shooters. I already mentioned earlier, Curtis Rose at shooting nearly 90%. Watson, 81.5%. And Mabry, just under 86%. So nothing or nothing wrong about that in the minds of the McPherson coaches as they see their talented guard step to the line. So he hits both, making it a 16-13 Tabor lead. So Crane setting the Tabor offense as he comes back in from the brief breather. So Jaden Miller becoming a bigger part of this Tabor team here, especially in the second semester, showing how much he can do to help Tabor's offense. You saw it on that 18-foot jumper earlier. A a impressive take there from Hemmert, but Mabry's able, ab able to knock it loose. So LeBron Wilson all the way to the basket, and he connects. <laughs> We'll get a 30-second timeout here from Coach Matt Warren. We'll step aside here as Tabor leads 16-15. Yeah. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service, always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Back here from the campus of Tabor College as Tabor has led for the first uh, Nine plus minutes here as they it is Blue Jay basketball out of the Tabor timeout. Would only venture to guess that a big part of War Coach Warren's message there is how they can keep the Bulldogs out of the lane because three point shooting yet to be something that they have connected on, but they are getting a lot of looks in the lane. And just like that, Crane gets his fourth basket of the game, giving him, or him already eight points here, eight of Tabor's first 18. Junior, just such, uh, just so quick and able to get to the basket if he gets any crease whatsoever. And so Rose able to answer there uh, with a fadeaway jumper, cutting Tabor's lead to one at 18 17. Holcomb with the lane and he attacks and scores an impressive take there from the 6 8 junior. Had to be assertive. He he was so and is able to uh, score high off the backboard. A great steal from Proctor, and he will score. Coach Warren going to be awfully pleased in Tabor's ability to jump in these passing lanes and keeping McPherson uncomfortable. So far, like I said earlier, if they've been able to keep the ball out of the lane, Tabor's defense has done quite well. Even with that fadeaway jumper from Rose a little bit, before not an easy shot so see if Tabor can seal the paint here Braxmeyer with the fadeaway jumper again one of those looks that Tabor's coaches will not mind see who they're going to say I think they're going to say Rose touched this last so it'll be Blue Jay basketball wasn't quite sure there it was quick in transition back in for the Bulldogs Quinn Collins and Antonio Watson so Proctor will inbound for the Blue Jays here as they have stretched their lead back out to five points. So 
Six McPherson turnovers already, a big part of Tabor able to, and its ability here to jump out to a lead here as we have 8.38 remaining and a five-point Blue Jay lead. Crane will put up the three. Rims out. Store with the rebound. Rose thinking about driving, but instead we'll find the six foot his six foot six teammate, who is one on one with the Blue Jay point guard, which will be a matchup McPherson will take all game tonight. So Crane think, wanting a little help side defense, and who can blame them? Because Store is a load on the block. So, and uh, like like mentioned earlier, averaging a double double in tonight heading into tonight's game, impressive shot there from the six foot three freshman, Jake Proctor. Tabor going toe to toe here with this talented McPherson squad. I think somehow Storr was able to reach around Crane and get possession of that ball and McPherson will get the timeout on the loose ball. So I think we're gonna get a, see how long this timeout will be. I think it'll be a 30 second. We'll step aside again briefly, five point Tabor lead. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. Many of you back here as McPherson will have possession out of the timeout. Store right underneath the rim. Not what you want if you're Tabor, but it'll be Tabor basketball here with a three point lead. Seven and a half minutes remaining here in the first half. McClure looking for a cutting Proctor, but instead we'll find a Boba on the perimeter. He puts up the three. Miller fighting for the rebound on the taller Collins, finding McClure at the block. Those extra possessions will be vital in tonight's game, and you got to hand it to Miller there, able to beat the much taller Collins to the loose ball. See if Tabor can stretch out its lead a little bit more. Led by five here now two or three times. I think we're going to get a foul here. Tabor wanted to travel, but Collins will step to the free throw line for a pair. Proctor's first foul, team fifth. Collins makes the first, making it a four-point Blue Jay lead. And he connects on both. So Tabor basketball here as we fall under seven minutes remaining here in the first half. McPherson bringing a little bit more pressure as Tabor brings the ball at the court, but Tabor able to beat it. Jaden Miller on the, thought about the three, instead drives, finding both on the perimeter, and he buries it. Got to admire Jaden Miller's patience there. Could have taken, the, taken a contested shot, instead drives, and is able to find a wide open Jack Voth on the wing. A shot Tabor will take every time. Voth again, unable to score. Try and go for the hot hand there. So, but Tabor out to its biggest lead here at 29 23 with 6 10 remaining in the first half. Turnovers really a thorn here in the Bulldogs side, but there's the six foot nine junior center for the Bulldogs burying a three from the top of the key. Something that I'm sure the Blue Jays coaches will take note of. Never hurts when you've got a guy of that size who can step out and knock down an open look. Miller with a three of his own. Short rebound to Braxmeyer. 
Tabor shooting 59.1% here. A really, really impressive number uh, for Tabor, especially coming in when you look at the fact that the Blue Jays just, again, like I said earlier, un struggling to string together string together possessions and also with the 11th or, yeah excuse me the 11th ranked field goal percentage in the conference so coming at a 42 percent and now here again after that make jumping back up to over 58 percent shooting here in tonight's game so 31 26 Tabor 451 remaining in the first half every time the Bulldogs answer Tabor is right there with a response of their own. And there is a three from Antonio Watson as the Blue Jays lead is now back down to two. So McPherson doing what it needs to do to withstand this Tabor push, keeping this game just at a one score game. See if Tabor is able to respond. Jack both looking for an open teammate. Proctor able to escape the pressure from Brax Meyer. A bow by into looking to go into Storr's body. And he, unable to score, uh, saves it, but will go into the hands of Quinn Collins. Got to hand it to Quinn Collins. Might be 6'9", but he can handle the ball, and he can step out and knock down a three. So an impressive threat there from McPherson. Not a good sign here if you're the Bulldogs as Colin Storr goes down in pain, grabbing his ankle. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. You never want to see that. We're also going to have a foul on this end on Quinn Collins. Again, never want to see this. So one of Casey, the KCAC's best here. Can't let me grab him at his ankle here, perhaps his shin. But uh, back up on his feet, on his own power. Really good to see. So, but he'll take a seat here and... Perhaps just uh, took a bit of a shot, but it looks like he'll be all right. I think we'll have a pair of free throws here for, I believe it was Jake Proctor who got fouled just before that injury timeout. And that is two fouls on, on uh, Quinn so Collins, which is person, something certainly to note here as we uh, close in here at the – to the end of the first half. Excuse me, Jack both shooting two free throws for the Blue Jays. Both unable to hit the first. Store immediately back in. So again, never want to see anybody go down, but glad, really glad to see him back in. And looks like maybe they're saying he has to sit a little bit longer after that, after going down. Saying, I'm ready to go, coach, but yeah, we'll just have to sit here for just a minute longer here after both second free throw. Both hits the second, making it a three point Tabor lead, 353. Remaining in the first half. Bulldogs winners of, of five out of their last six, including wins again against number six Southwestern. That's number six nationally, by the way. And also wins against Ottawa at Bethany and at Evangel. So Tabor doing a really good job here against a talented McPherson squad. Well, that is a costly foul. So Collins has to stay on the floor. Uh, something that will not make the McPherson coaches happy. They had to send score, Store back to the scores table. He was going to check in for, for Collins. But instead, Collins picks up his third, which will be a massive storyline here uh, in the going into the second half. As I imagine, Collins will sit here for the remainder of the first half. Tabor holding a lead for all of tonight's game thus far. See if they can keep that going here as we close in on halftime. Hemmert with the corner three, rims out. And we're going to get a, a push in the back here from James Aboba, the Tabor senior. That is his second. 
Checking back in for the table. Number 15, Kit Holcomb. Kenyon Holcomb back on the floor for the Blue Jays. Both and Crane with eight apiece here for the Blue Jays in the early going. And Store and Collins both with eight. But again, Collins having to go to the bench with three fouls. So Store will step to the free throw line. And uh, all things considered, probably where you want to see the talented big man who, while he is just such a force down low, shooting just 50% from the free throw line. And as he misses the first here, Jake Proctor will come back on and giving Jaden Miller a break. Thatcher McClure also back for the Blue Jays, checking in for Kenyon Holcomb. So Storm misses the first here with his second free throw. And he misses his second. Somehow, Mabry is able to grab the offensive rebound between three Blue Jays but loses his footing, and it will be Tabor basketball. An impressive effort to go up between three defenders, but unable to uh, yeah, again, unable to get a stable footing there as he skies for the rebound. Aboba goes, drives in on Store, is unable to connect. Store doing a good job defensively there, giving Aboba space and not fouling. And there's a drive from Jerome Mabry, making it a one-point Blue Jay lead, a 32-31. Floor with an impressive take in the Mabry body, pushing Tabor's lead back to three. Again, McClure just so agile for, for his size and unable to get to the rim as he pleases. Braxmeyer beats Proctor, but rushes the shot and is unable to connect. So Tabor will take over here as we go under two minutes here remaining in the first half. Crane guarded by Curtis Rose. Aboba will put up another three, is off. So, Coach Warren, I think, wanting to work the ball there a little bit more, but it will be McPherson basketball here as they look to cut into Tabor's lead. Store again, just so strong on the block as Tabor's lead falls to one. 130 remaining here in the first half. Tabor 34, McPherson 33. Store already with 10 points and, and five boards. So can't imagine a, at this rate, a double-double. I would think it would be coming sooner rather than later, but certainly hope the Blue Jays can eat in his production. And McClure puts up a bit of a circus shot, but is able to get an offensive rebound and score. Rose gets a lane to the basket. Aboba meets him in the air and scores. An errant pass there from Aboba, and Broxmeyer connects, but it will be Tabor, or does not connect. Uh, Broxmeyer shoots, misses, but it will be Tabor basketball as it goes off the hands of James Aboba. So McPherson looking to take its first lead in tonight's game here. Having possession here with 42 seconds remaining in the first half. Watson guarded by both. Here's Store. Get, draws a double team. And connects. So McPherson takes its first lead here of the game with 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Will be Tabor basketball. They won't be able to hold quite for the extent of the game clock with about a second or second and a half difference between the game clock and the shot clock. So see if Tabor can get a good look here to take the lead here before the break. Crane driving, looking for McClure, finds him and is able to score. McClure doing a great job scoring through contact. Rose is pushing to try to get a shot off, but Crane is able to tip it loose. So, halftime score, Tabor 38, McPherson 37. We will take a break here for a little bit. We'll be back with some first half stats here. Hillsboro Ford 
Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. 
create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located... Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service, always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet.
Many of you know that the Eitan Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitan Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitsonAgency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Read the state. Welcome back, everybody, to the campus of Tabor College for what should be a fun second half. Tabor with a 38 37 advantage here as we start the second half. So, some first half stats for you for the Blue Jays. Actually, we'll start with the visiting Bulldogs for. Uh, Colin Storr, 12 points, 5 rebounds to lead all scores. Quinn Collins with 8 points. Jerome Mabry with 6. Curtis Rose with 4. LeBron Wilson with 4. And Antonio Watson with 3. So again, that Storr with 12. Collins with 8. Mabry with 6. Wilson with 4. Rose with 4. And Watson with 3. For the Blue Jays. Thatcher McClure with 10 points to lead all Tabor scores. Jack Voth and Caleb Crane with eight, each with eight. Jake Proctor with six. And Kenyon Holcomb, Jaden Miller, and Kate Hemmert all with two points. So again, that's McClure with 10. Voth and Crane with eight. Proctor with six. And Holcomb, Miller, and Hemmert all with two points apiece. Shooting wise, the team's virtually identical. Tabor at uh, 17 to 33 from the field at 51.5%. And McPherson, 15 to 29 from the field at 51.7%. Three point shooting, really not a factor for either team. Tabor just one for 10, McPherson two for six. Uh, and neither really free throw shooting. So uh, you can just see it. I mean, the difference being just a one extra made shot. Rebounds virtually identical at 17 to 15 with Tabor with the advantage. And. Uh, also, just uh, one more McPherson turnover, so both teams playing a pretty similar half of basketball, so we'll see what the final 20 minutes hold here as Tabor will have possession to start the second half. Holcomb looking for Holcomb on the block, but Storr able to poke it loose, showing his versatility against the Blue Jays' big man, so it'll be McPherson basketball here with as we are just beginning tonight's second half. 
Collins back out with three fouls. That will be interesting to watch to see if Tabor might be able to force him into his fourth because he definitely was a factor early but had to take a seat with three fouls. And Storr is just so strong. He gets up two looks, unable to hit either, but McPherson grabs possession yet again. And Collin with another off McPherson offensive rebound. Tabor taps it out, but it will be McPherson basketball. So Tabor's defense holding strong here, but never want to give a team this many extra shot attempts. So be Braxmeyer thought about the 18-footer, but instead finds Watson store on Holcomb. One of those matchups I think we all wanted to see with two very talented big men. The switch there has Holcomb on the small rows, but somehow is unable to connect. So unfortunately, the extra possession costs the Blue Jays as uh, it will be should be 39-38 McPherson. So we'll have to adjust the score here as I think it should be 40 to 39. So I think we might have to stop here for a moment. Should be. No, I think they're, they're working on it. Did they give him a three on that last one? That, okay, I guess they did. So I didn't think he was behind the line, but oh, no, they just did it. So just had to give him a little bit of time. So a one point Blue Jay lead here. A store trying to drive on Crane and somehow is able to get the ball up. Just pure strength there from the Bulldog Junior. But again, like I said in the first half, sending sending store to the free throw line might just be the better option as he is shooting only 50% from the line. Store misses the first. See if Taylor can block out his rebounding. It's not been their friend here through the first two minutes of the second half. He makes the second, so all tied at 40 here as we are two minutes into the second half. So Jack Vogt, guarded by Watson, will look to push. Trying to use his size on the smaller Watson, but instead will kick it back out to Crane as Tabor sets its offense. But Proctor off the screen from Holcomb. Great feed, but Holcomb didn't go straight up, so had to hesitate. But Crane able to go into Braxmeyer's body and score. So giving Tabor the lead back at 42-40. That will put Crane in double digits with 10 points. Crane 5 of 6 from the field in tonight's game. Great block from Holcomb, but Storr is able to get the ball back. And he will go to the free throw line on the second attempt. Store looks pretty, pretty shot down there as he, as he uh, has had to work hard um, with a, some extra shot attempts, but credit Tabor's defense making him work for it. So we'll see how uh, his stamina holds here over the final 17 minutes. He hits the first. Tabor basketball here as he goes as Store goes one for line from one for one from the line. Crane looking for that crease finds it. It just is looks looks like we're gonna get Rose on the reach on the shot. So Crane will step to the line for two shots. McPherson thought otherwise, but it'll be. Two free throws here for the Blue Jay Jr. He connects on his first. Crane, the Blue Jay's second best free throw. Oh, I beg your pardon. No, yep, second best free throw shooter. Getting confused looking at the conference and uh, overall numbers. 
uh, yeah, coming in at 78.7% to McClure's 81.7%. So someone coach Matt Warren likes to see step to the line as Tabor pushes its lead back out to three. And just like that, Braxmeyer is able to connect as he beats Proctor to the basket. Been a really fun game. I, I Memory serves me right. I think Tabor briefly took an eight-point lead uh, in the first half. Um, <laughs> excuse me there. As, uh, I was hoping Crane would be okay. So briefly took an eight-point lead in the first half, but been six or less moving forward. Rose, though, definitely would give him credit on the slam there in transition. So an impressive finish there from the sophomore from Oklahoma. So McPherson now back ahead, 45-44. And Crane through contact. We got quite a battle going on here between Rose and Crane. So it'll be fun to watch here going into uh, the final 16 minutes. So you can see they're locked eye to eye on offense and defense. Rose with the bigger defender. Instead, we'll find Storr with Crane on the block. Looks like Collins might have taken an extra step, but we'll get the basket at the rim. So Storr is unable to get back defensively, and Holcomb will go to the line. Storr doesn't like it, but just a little too much contact here as Holcomb went up for the dunk. That will be Storr's second. I think we're going to get a technical here. So Storr will get his third. So Coach TJ Skiltson not happy with his junior as we will get four free throws here for the Blue Jays. McClure goes one for two on the technical free throws. We will have Holcomb now shoot two foul, two free throws from the foul, the original foul on Storr. So yeah, both Storr and Collins with three fouls apiece. So we'll see how much that factors here into the, the rest of tonight's game. Holcomb want to make note of his free throw shooting, just 65% for the season, but over 71% in conference play at 25 of 35 from the line. And he hits his first. Storr understandably frustrated, but his McPherson teammates trying to calm him down here as he has to take a seat. So Tabor, after the free throws, takes a two-point lead here with 15.33 remaining in tonight's game. So see if that uh, moment gives Tabor a jolt of life here after McPherson briefly took the lead. Hardaway buries the three to give McPherson a one-point advantage. Gotta love KCAC basketball. Two talented teams here tonight who uh, are looking for a either a road win from McPherson's favor or uh, Tabor looking to take down one of the conference best. Crane again. Got it. the junior now six to seven from the floor and now leads Tabor with 14 points, giving Tabor a one point lead. Rose drives on McClure. I think we're gonna get yeah, we're gonna say McClure touched it last. Rose will inbound the basketball for the Bulldogs. Also want to note, McPherson with their 11-3 record, they are 7-1 on the road, which is awfully tough to do no matter what level of basketball you're talking about. Having one at St. Mary, at Bethany, at Evangel, and uh, then a couple of non-conference, three non-conference road wins. So you always like to see your team able to be road warriors, and McPherson has been exactly that here in 2023-2024. Braxmeyer looking to cut around Crane. Gets the shot up, and it's going to be 
the loose ball, it's going to be Blue Jay basketball. Crane, just such a major piece here of Tabor's effort here, both offensively and defensively. 16 points on 7 of 8 shooting here, but he'll take a break here as Jaden Miller runs the point for the Blue Jays. Got to be excited. Jaden Miller, another one of those freshmen, just the ceiling so high as he's been taking more minutes here and as we go later into the season. Both tried to find the cutting Hemmert. Instead, Miller will take the jumper from the top of the key and hit. So Tabor back out to a three-point lead. We're going to get a charge here. Oh, thought we were going to get a charge. The ref had the stamina on the call, but I misread it, so it'll be a block on Jaden Miller. So that is his first, team third. Rose inbounding here. Braxmeyer, one of my favorite players in the conference. 6-1, but just all over the court for the Bulldogs. Uh, averaging almost eight rebounds per game at, as one of uh, McPherson's guards. And got to love a guy who, or got to love a player who can uh, just do it all. Score, uh, go and shoot well from three-point range all over the court and able to attack the glass as well. Proctor looking for McClure on the block as he is botting up with Jerome Mabry. Said Tabor will reset both with a deep three. Unable to hit. And it'll be McPherson basketball. Mabry to the rim on McClure. Unable to score. And Tabor's <clears throat> just has struggling on the defensive rebound. De defensive rebounding, but McPherson unable to score here. It'll be stay Bulldog basketball. Seth Madrin back in for the Bulldogs, and Aboba will give Thatcher McClure a seed, who I think needs a breather for just a few minutes. So a McPherson turnover here. It will be Tabor basketball. Yeah, Tabor had a two-rebound advantage at halftime, but McPherson on the defensive glass, especially here now, with a 23-19 advantage on the boards. And uh, something Tabor will need to clean up if it wants to finish this game. Because McPherson is active from all five positions on the court, attacking the glass. So what can Tabor do here? Miller... Uh, Undersized against Hardaway. An impressive jumper, unable to finish. And Madrin bringing the ball up the floor for the Bulldogs. Thought he might take it, but instead will kick it back out to Watson. And loose ball here as Store tips it. And it will be taper basketball. So a physical game, but it's what you expect here in the KCAC. And we'll get Jack Both will step to the line for two as we'll get Jamil Hardaway on the push. That is his first. I think we're going to get a full McPherson timeout here. So one of our first stoppages here of the second half. We'll be two free throws from Jack Voth when we return from the break. We'll be back with you in one minute. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet.
Many of you know that the Eitan Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitan Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitsonAgency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620- Back here at Tabor College is the Blue Jay freshman guard, Jack Voth. We'll get two free throws after the foul on Jamil Hardaway. Voth misses the first. Let's take a look at Tabor's shooting numbers. And while three-point shooting has been a little tough at one for 11, means you've got them, or you've, the Blue Jay shooting 21 of 29 from inside the three-point line, which is an awfully impressive clip. So shooting 72% inside the three-point line as uh, both hits the second. He will take a quick seat, as I'm sure we'll see him back on the court here very quickly. Good to see Creelan Avery back out there for the Blue Jays. So the sophomore guard, someone who was instrumental in uh, Tabor kind of building its identity under Coach Matt Warren in his first year last year. Avery from Lubbock, Texas one of the few players from the state of Texas on Tabor's roster. I think we're going to get a foul here on Miller as both players go hit the floor hard. That will be his second, I believe. Mad general inbounds for the Blue, for the Bulldogs, excuse me. Madrin, a hometown kid. A McPherson Bullpup, now McPherson Bulldog. In my previous position, I uh, worked in Derby and saw Seth Madrin a number of times in high school, so fun to see him now in college. A great career for Coach Kinnaman at McPherson High School, and now a part of what McPherson is building at the collegiate level. So Watson hits the first here as he will look to go two for two at the line. And makes it a 54-52 Blue Jay lead here with 11.49 remaining. Tabor doing just about everything right in this game as they are taking on a really talented McPherson squad. So Crane thought he had a lane, but instead will take it back out. Avery with the deep three, unable to connect, and it will be Bulldog basketball. So Thatcher McClure will step back in, giving Cade Hemmer the seat. Avery played in, I think, just about eight games so far this year. So good to see him back out there. Someone who has quite a few minutes, even as just as a sophomore for the Blue Jays. I think we're going to get a goaltend here on Aboba. Wasn't quite sure if they might, but called. So all tied here at 54. We'll get a look at the replay here. Looked close, but it will. Bulldogs will get two points. Both inbound here for Tabor as they look to retake the lead. Holcomb with a Jamil Hardaway closing quickly, but is able to uh, sense the presence of the Bulldog guard. So Crane back out here doing a great job leading this Tabor offense. And McClure just with a burst of energy having sat for the last few minutes. I think we're going to get a foul here, possibly on store. 
Maybe on Mabry. I'm not sure. We'll see. It, it will be on Mabry. So Storr is able to avoid his fourth and just Mabry's first. Two free throws here for Holcomb. Maybe you're familiar with Tabor basketball, but having been able to see the Blue Jays quite as much this year, Holcomb a transfer from Cameron University in Oklahoma, a junior from Tomball, Texas. Uh, played actually one year at Incarnate Word in Texas before going to Cameron, the Division II school in Oklahoma. He connects on both free throws. So always helpful when you've got your 6A big man who draws so much contact, contact and is able to step to the line and knock him down. So I believe that puts him at four for four from the line in tonight's game. So Mabry knocks down the three. And now 57-56 Bulldog lead. What will these final 10 minutes hold? It's been fun. Hope you've enjoyed it. I grew up watching plenty of KCAC basketball and these games are just so much fun. You so much talent across the floor. So have a real soft spot for small college basketball. A lot of talent in this game. Holcomb again answering the three from uh, Mabry there to give Tabor a one point advantage. Proctor doing a good job botting the much bigger store. And Mabry will drive into McClure. Unable to score. Rose tries to tip it. Tabor tried to call the timeout. Um, but McPherson regains possession, but Tabor will tip it out of bounds. 58-57 Blue Jays, 9.48 remaining. I think the thing that's may impress me here is while McPherson has had its share of extra possessions here in the second half, they're not giving... Uh, Tabor is not giving McPherson high percentage licks, so credit to their defense for standing tall even when they may struggle to grab a defensive rebound. Both guarded by the smaller Rose, and he's trying to go through his body, and it looks like we will get a, a foul. Rose, his second. Much like I said with Miller earlier, both same story, just such a dynamic scorer as a freshman with a bright, bright future. Fun to watch him progress here through his first season at Tabor. If you heard Jack Voth from Wilmington, North Carolina and might have been confused, that'd be because Jack Voth, prior to moving to Wilmington, North Carolina, playing for Hoggard High School, uh, was a member of the Bueller Crusader basketball team and was the 4A player of the year as a junior for the Crusaders. And uh, so no stranger here to Central Kansas. Fun to have him back here with us on the Tabor roster. And uh, one note I shared a little bit earlier in the season is Proc both Jake Proctor and Jack both close friends and uh, AAU teammates and reuniting here at Tabor. So really awesome to have them both here on campus. So both is able to body store, and I think they're going to say he went into the body. It looked like perhaps he was able to avoid contact, but store will go to the line. Have to imagine we have a few members of the Voth family out there in North Carolina joining us tonight, so hope you're enjoying the broadcast. Store is able to hit the first, and any free throw he can knock down is going to be big for the Bulldogs. Just a 50% free throw shooter coming into tonight's game. And now I think he's at three for six. If, oh, they're going to wipe off that free throw with a lane violation. So a uh, costly blow there for McPherson. So Tabor will keep a two-point lead here. Nine minutes left. Tabor looking to uh, finish and finish a game that they quite honestly could really use against a really talented McPherson roster. So Crane looking for the cutting McClure, but McPherson gets its hand in the passing lane. Watson will put up the three and bury it. So 61-60, McPherson, 841 remaining. I think we're gonna get a full timeout. So we'll step aside for a minute. We'll be back with you here shortly. 
Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Back with you here at Tabor Basketball. Antonio Watson connects on the three to give McPherson the lead, so Tabor will look to answer here. McPherson, one point lead, it's biggest in this game. So Tabor has done a good job when McPherson has been able to take, take the lead in responding immediately. We'll see if they can do it here again. I think we're gonna get Braxmeyer with the body. So that is their 18th foul. So we'll get free throws here. And Crane is exactly who you want stepping to the line. With Crane's journey to the to the Blue Jays, uh, the Simsboro, Louisiana native started at Redlands Community College in Oklahoma uh, and uh, visited Tabor actually after his junior college career, but instead went home for a year at Xavier University in Louisiana, but joined the Blue Jays here uh, in year two under Coach Matt Warren. Watson's feeling it, so back to back threes from the Bulldog Junior, giving McPherson its biggest lead here tonight as we fall under eight minutes remaining. So McPherson with a little burst of energy here, trying to build on what it's, has been its biggest lead so far tonight. Proctor puts up the three in and out. As it'll be McPherson basketball. Tabor needing to stop Mabry as he goes all the way to the rim, but Holcomb responds. Uh, but they're gonna say he stepped out of bounds. Bummer. About all I can say after that. So McPherson basketball here. Holcomb with the impressive block, but does step out of bounds to give McPherson possession. So Tabor in need of a defensive stop here as McPherson again has built its biggest lead of tonight's game. Store connects like he has done so so much this season pushing McPherson's lead to six so an 8-0 run here from McPherson as we are approach seven minutes left in this in tonight's game so Tabor in need of a of a push here to slow down McPherson Holcomb will put up a three much needed shot from the the junior so Back to a one possession game here as Coach Warren implores his defense to get a stop here. Every possession in a game that hasn't been separated more than two possessions all but one time. So every possession matters in a game this close. So been fun. Rexmeyer thought about driving, but instead will put up the three. Got to give Rose credit. Smaller, but does everything he can to try to give McPherson an extra possession. Tabor, however, able to grab the rebound. So see if they can cut into this McPherson lead. Holcomb looked like he wanted to try for another three, but instead drives. Proctor will put it up. He's off, and Mabry grabs the rebound. Watson thought about driving, but Proctor's able to seal the lane. 66-63 Bulldogs, six minutes left. 
Watson trying to get the baseline, puts the shoulder down, but is unable to connect, so McClure grabs the rebound. Tabor again with a, a, a possibility of tying this, and I think we're going to get a Tabor timeout. So full Blue Jay timeout, 66-63 McPherson. We will step aside for a minute and be right back. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage. Back here for Tabor. As Tabor will have the ball here out of their full timeout. 5.47 remaining. McPherson with a three-point advantage. Jane Miller finds both on the wing. Three-pointers off, but Holcomb able to grab the rebound. And with a two-handed slam. So, Holcomb with five straight here to cut into what was a six-point McPherson lead. Storer looking for to pass, which surprises me because he's taken advantage of just about every one-on-one -on -one he's had tonight. Both able to poke the ball loose, but McPherson is able to run down the loose ball. Oh. oh, Tabor. Tabor's coach is not happy there. They had to put up a rush shot at the end of the shot clock, but Braxmeyer's able. Braxmeyer's able to grab the ball and uh, get up the the shot there to draw the the foul. So, and more importantly, that's that is a fourth on Jack Voth, but Tabor's players saying that that was on Jake Proctor. We'll see. If the officials choose to review this or not. We'll take a we'll take a brief break here as uh, the ref stop uh, steps to the monitor to uh, review who this foul was on. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or bodybuild, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. The ref still reviewing this last foul as Owen Braxmeyer will step to the line for two shots for the Bulldogs. We'll see here. Yeah, that does look like it should be on Proctor as both was standing behind the shot. So we'll see if the officials agree. It was on Proctor, so that will that will just be three fouls on both. So. A needed review and result here for the Blue Jays is you don't want to see the six foot six freshman have to take a seat. So, I believe that will be Proctor's third. So, Proctor with three and both with three. Braxmeyer hits the first. Also, just about a 50% free throw shooter. So, a big make here for McPherson as it tries to maintain its lead. Misses the second, so 
67-65, Bulldogs, five minutes remaining. See if Tabor might be able to find, find a way to pull an upset or McPherson will get its eighth road win of the season. So big result either way. The lane wide open and you can see Tabor just trying to find ways to take the ball inside, but McPherson doing a pretty good job at sealing the, perim sealing the perimeter. McClure, just an impressive take around a, a good defender and Owen Braxmeyer. So to refresh everyone's memory, this game was 66-60 not long ago with McPherson had its biggest lead and it's now 67-67 here with 423 remaining. So that just one point here over the final the last three minutes for the Bulldogs. So Tabor's defense really tightening here as McPherson had hoped to maybe pull away, but Tabor's defense felt otherwise. Rose with a three from the perimeter is off, and both with the rebound. We'll see if he chooses to push. He does, and he goes all the way to the rim for a Tabor basket, and, we, and a Tabor lead, and we'll get a timeout here. So 69-67 Blue Jays with 3.59 remaining. We'll step aside for a 30-second timeout. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service, always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. McPherson basketball here as Tabor is on a bit of a 9-1 run of its own. McPherson leading 66-60 not long ago, but Tabor back out in front with a 69-67 advantage. Less than four minutes to go. See what kind of finish we have in store. Watson puts up a contested three, which I'm not sure that's the shot McPherson's coaches wanted but Tabor will look to see if they can build on its lead here. So both has the one-on-one, -on -one and you can see him lick his lips for the opportunity to drive. He was ready to go. So he did so, and he will go to the line for two. So two big, big free throws coming up for the Blue Jay freshman. Tabor now... Look at the most recent numbers, 13 of 17 from the line. So it's been a good night thus far, but boy, will they need what they can get at the line here over these final three and a half minutes. In and out. Thought, thought we had it, both thought it was in two, but will remain a two-point Tabor lead. Four Blue Jays in double figures, I might add. A crane with 16. McClure with 15, both and Holcomb each with 13. So both hits the second to make it a three-point Tabor lead. Colin Storer leading all scores with 19 points and three rebounds shy of a double-double for the Bulldogs. Tabor's crowd getting into it, rooting for its defense here as it has really done a good job closing on McPherson. Again, that's only one McPherson point here over the last four and a half minutes. So can't say enough about Tabor's defense here as they were facing, certainly facing some adversity against what has been a potent McPherson offense here of late. So see if Tabor continued to build on its lead here and put a little pressure on McPherson. So both on Watson will go into the lane. Unable to score, but Holcomb grabs the rebound. Uh, that ball will fall into McClure's hands as Tabor maintains possession. So 2.34 remaining, three-point Tabor lead. See what the Blue Jays have as they, after they inbound the ball. So Holcomb going into store, does a great job and finishes. 
five-point Tabor lead here. 2.17 remaining. Might the Blue Jays have an upset in store here tonight? We, we will see. Great double team from Proctor. I think we're going to get a foul here on Holcomb. So Holcomb picks up his fourth, but with just two minutes remaining, I think you certainly want to leave him on the floor as he's done a great job defending the Bulldog big man. Caleb Crane returns here as Jaden Miller takes a seat. Storm misses the first. And gets the, the roll on the second. So a four-point Tabor lead here with 2.06 remaining. McPherson will apply pressure here to try to stymie this uh, younger Blue Jay lineup, but they're able to beat it. McClure just probably not the feed they needed as McPherson's able to force the turnover. Store drives all the way. Not bad for agility there for the Bulldog big man. That'll be both for it. So Holcomb and both each with four. I would only imagine that McPherson's coaches will want the ball to touch number 11's hands as much as possible here, especially as the Blue Jays get into foul trouble. Now 20 points for Storr in tonight's game. Certainly would wish if your Tabor had that possession back because they were had had a had a opportunity in transition, but the an errant pass gives McPherson the basketball. So see what Tabor has here. A minute 50 remaining. 72-70 Blue Jays. Coach Warren calling the play for his junior guard. Crane will go to Mabry and just rim off. Crane doesn't miss many of those. Man, Colin Storr is almost single-handedly willing McPherson here over the last about 60 seconds. So we're going to get a timeout here from Tabor. See if what, how long this timeout's going to be. It's a full timeout. So we'll step aside briefly and be back with you here for the final minute 24. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Many of you know. Back with you here from Tabor College here for the final minute of tonight's game. Looking at the play-by-play -play here, got to hand it to McPherson because that jumper or that uh, transition basket from Store, if I'm seeing correctly here, was its first field goal in the better part of six minutes, having only scored from the free throw line before that. So. They had a 66-60 lead with seven minutes remaining, but uh, had only scored from the free throw line over its last four points. But Storr's basket there breaks uh, breaks that streak here. So McPherson has hung tight. So we'll see if they, they can pull off the, the road win later. Tabor can get a, an upset that would sure do a lot for its season. So Jake Proctor setting the Tabor offense. McClure with the screen. Finds Holcomb who will drive, kicks it back to Proctor for the three, short, but Holcomb is able to grab the rebound. McClure who exactly you want to shoot it and buries it. Such a big shot from the Blue Jay junior, sophomore, excuse me. See and may see an instant replay of that. Holcomb with the offensive rebound. And both, while he is such a good three-point shooter and has been one of Tabor's best, he hits McClure, who I think any of Tabor's coaches will say they want the ball in his hands here 
with an opportunity to pull an upset. It looks like they're going to possibly review here to see if he might have been behind the line. I don't know if we can get another look at that replay or not and see if McClure's toe might have been on the line. So they're reviewing it at the scores table. From here, it looked like a three, but I'm also up atop the bleachers, so don't have I don't have the view that they have on the floor. So we'll see what the officials call. A much-needed basket either way, so Tabor's coaches probably won't complain, but certainly would like to see 75 on the scoreboard. Good shot here from our crew. Oh, man, very close. Very, very close. So... They're probably looking at the same shot we are. So it looks like they are going to say a two. Wow, okay. So they're saying his toe just barely touched the line. I thought they might uphold that call, but instead it will be just a two from Thatcher McClure. So Tabor's defense in need of a stop here. Uh, taking a two-point lead here as we're fall under a minute to play. Holcomb and Storr battling on the block. But exactly what you'd expect to see from two of the better big men in the conference. Holcomb, a great job. Knocks it loose, but McPherson's able to grab possession. I think a, stop, a shot clock stoppage here. Yeah, they reset it, but should still be at 11. So McPherson ball here as they inbounds here. Got to give Kenyon Holcomb credit. He has just hung so tough here against a dynamic score and Rose will go to the line so made him earn it we'll make him earn it but McPherson will have an opportunity here with one of the best free throw shooters in the conference so Rose an impressive 42 of 47 coming into tonight's game from the line only five missed free throws all season so we'll see see what this trip holds and he hits his first that's his first free throw of the game. So, see if he can knot this one. Tabor will call a timeout, which I'm sure is to set its play in the event of a miss or a make here. So, it is a full timeout. So, we'll step aside for 30 seconds, though, and be back with you here in just a bit. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Hillsboro. So what will it be? 74-73 Blue Jays. Curtis Rose, the sophomore guard from Midwest o City, Oklahoma, will have one more free throw here. With a make, we'll see what Tabor's offense has in store. Uh, but with a miss, can Tabor body one of the best rebounders in the conference as Colin Storr will undoubtedly be doing everything he can to grab an offensive rebound. So either way, be curious to see what, what we have in these final 33 seconds. So even with a one point lead or in a tied game, Tabor will have about a three second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. So see the second free throw here. And he connects, so not what you'd expect from someone who came in tonight only missing five free throws all season. So Tabor ball, 30 seconds remaining in a tight game, 74-74. Hope you've enjoyed this one as much as I think everyone here has. What will we see? So Crane, Tabor taking its time. I think certainly not wanting to leave McPherson much time if they are unable to score. I have to imagine we are going to see Tabor do everything it can to get in the lane. Misses. McPherson will have the opportunity to drive for the game winner. And we're going to overtime. 
how about a little more basketball? Hope, hope you're ready for it at home. My heart's beating fast. I'm sure yours is as well. So we'll take a break here. We have an extra five minutes of basketball. So we'll step aside for a minute and be back with you for some extra basketball. estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Five minutes added to the clock is 40 minutes was not enough to decide this one. So what will it be here over the final five minutes? Tabor's defense doing just about everything it needed to do to finish this one off, but we will head to overtime to see who can uh, grab the conference win here. So yeah, Tabor holding McPherson to just eight points over the final seven minutes of regulation, but just unable to connect on its final jumper. Coach Warren was actively cheering his guys there as they went into uh, the timeout, telling his guys that we still have this, and what are we going to get here? So we're going to get be McPherson basketball. Sorry about that. The mic fell close to my face. So a little bit loud there, but here we go. So McPherson possession here to start overtime. 4.53 here in the first possession of overtime. But Rose, surprisingly, Store was not ready for the ball, and it'll be a McPherson turnover. So Tabor turnover, but Tabor able to hold it defensively to retake possession. So Crane will go all the way to the rim, score, and, and it's fouled. The junior doing what you want your upperclassmen to do. There's no question about that. So Crane will step to the line for an additional free throw and connect. So a great opening possession here from the Blue Jays as we start overtime. 77-74 Tabor. And Storr was ready that second time. It, Holcomb holds his, holds his position and Tabor is able to grab the defensive rebound. So not too many open open possessions when Store gets the ball in the lane, but Tabor is able to to hold steady against one of the KCAC's best. So let's see if Tabor can build on its lead. Proctor thought about a three. McClure will put up a three. Long. Holcomb trying to chase down the loose ball, but it will go into the hands of Antonio Watson. Watson with a three. Looks like it might have been tipped, but Rose is able to grab the ball. I think we're going to get McClure on the block. That will be McClure's third, and we'll have two free throws as both teams are in the double bonus. Mabry misses his first. Very uncommon. Mabry entered tonight 30 of 35 for the season from the free throw line. Missing was two for two before this trip. And it makes the second. So 77 75 Blue Jays as they retake possession. We'll make mention that Crane is. Two points shy of a season high, having scored 20 points twice this year, sitting at 19 to lead all Tabor scores. Proctor over to Crane, who will drive the baseline. Awfully close to that baseline. 
Holcomb will put up the three. Mabry will grab the rebound. Mabry doing what he can to go into the body of McClure. And Rose will score on the assist from his teammates. So 77-77, three minutes remaining here in, over, in the first overtime. I think Tabor will want to do everything in its power to get inside the three-point line. Tabor just two of 19 from three in this game. So we'll want to get a higher percentage look. No question about it. So McClure sets the screen for both. So McClure will put up the three. Misses it. It will be Tabor basketball. What a battle from the Blue Jay freshman. Pro Proctor in between two Bulldog defenders. They Store is calling for a review. So we'll see what happens here. We'll get a look at it here. Awfully tough to tell there. I think we're going to probably need our baseline camera to show us. Show us what we saw there. The baseline camera was in the right position, position so we'll see if that's a look that the officials get. And there we have it. Look at that. So we'll see what happens here. So McClure misses the three. Baseline camera not quite on the look, so that might work in Tabor's favor here. So I'm imagining Tabor will maintain possession. McPherson hoping for a different answer, but we will see. They are watching ever so closely. But with the best view coming from up top, I'm oh there, there's the review I'm sure they're looking at. Forget about our our uh, camera from the from the top. So we'll see what this is, call is going to be. It will stay Tabor basketball. Oh, excuse me. Going to be McPherson basketball. So the rest deem there was enough video evidence to give the ball to McPherson. Coach Warren getting an explanation. So we'll see uh, how that possession factors into the final two and a half minutes. Would have certainly liked to keep the ball on Tabor's end, but defense will need to see if they can come up with a stop here. Store slips. Ooh. We're gonna get, well, I'll just let the video do the talking on that one. So that will be Kenyon Holcomb's fifth, a big loss for the Blue Jays. The store will step the line for two free throws. undoubtedly will play a role here in the final two minutes as Tabor's best post defender will have to sit now with five fouls. Hard to see the junior go out. Kenyon playing one of his better games of the season. Take a look here to see where his effort ranks among his performance this year. Storr putting his best foot forward at the free throw line. So Kenyon Holcomb finishing with 15 points and 10 rebounds. So Gret with the double-double, a season-high scoring. And we'll see if, uh, check here, if that's his first double-double of the season. Doesn't look like that, but still. Hard to see Kenyon take a seat there, putting, really playing a, a, one of his better games. So McPherson will take possession here, or sorry, excuse me. McPherson takes the two-point lead. Will be a timeout here with uh, about two minutes remaining in overtime. 79-77 McPherson. We'll take a quick break. Don't let 
flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Tabor basketball out of the timeout here. So see what Tabor can do just with one make here. Actually in its first possession when Crane was able to score and draw the foul here. So Tabor in need of, a, of an answer. Overtime has not been kind to them other than that first possession. So McClure on, this, on the smaller rows will drive. Kick it to Crane to the open vote. Missed the three point line. Huh. Would like one more. This has not been, not been friendly, and that, that's putting it mildly. So Tabor's defense in desperate need here of a stop. And there it is. So both will push, and we're going to get a foul here on Mabry. So we'll get two free throws here for Jack Both as Jerome Mabry picks up his second. Gotta love KCAC basketball. Certainly never boring. Much needed free throw from the freshman. See if he can tie this game up at 79. Nine players in double figures in this one, so. Scored on the second, so Tabor still down one, 135 remaining, 79-78 Bulldogs. Rose setting the McPherson offense with a, a screen from Colin Storr. McClure now tasked with bodying a load on the block, so Braxmeyer will drive on Proctor. Proctor doing a fantastic job. Braxmeyer kicks it out to Watson. But that's going to be Tabor basketball as that ball bounces over the backboard. So Tabor, Tabor ball, 109 left, trailing by one. These games doing a number to a heart rate. My goodness. So <laughs> I'm sure it's the same for all of you at home. So. Coach Warren will call a timeout here, full timeout. We'll step aside for 30 seconds and set the stage for the final minute. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, we're serving. Back here with the final minute of the first overtime. We'll see if this decides the game or if we will still need more basketball. One minute, exactly, yeah, exactly 60 seconds left in this one. Tabor basketball trailing by one. Crane to Proctor. Tabor certainly having its play set here. Nearly threw the ball out of bounds. And McClure scores, grabbing the offensive rebound. The Tabor sophomore doing everything he can to will his team. That ball is tipped loose. 
and store like it has been all year or all game. It just gets his hand on the ball and it will be a McPherson timeout. We'll stay right here. So McClure first off doing a fantastic job keeping that ball in bounce, but then to grab the offensive rebound and score. So 80-79 here. Again, we'll stay with you here and uh, set up this final 35 seconds. So McClure now with 19 points also. So again, I mentioned earlier, just so, some impressive uh, performances tonight. Crane and McClure each with 19, both and Holcomb with 15. So four Blue Jays in double figures, five Bulldogs, 26 and 11 for Colin Storr, 12 points for Curtis Rose, 11 points for Antonio Watson, 10 apiece for Quinn Collins and Jarrell Mabry. So always fun in the KCAC, and that's the understatement of the night. So it will be McPherson basketball here as they were able to maintain possession off the miss. We'll see what we have out of the timeout. So got to give uh, PA announcer Nate Howard some credit here, doing what he can to uh, bring this Blue Jay crowd to their feet. So see what the Tabor defense has here. I can only imagine this play has one player in mind and one player only, and his, his number is 11. An impressive play, but Tabor is able to, it's going to be tipped off McPherson here, so it will be Tabor basketball here, and I would uh, venture to guess we will be seeing some McPherson fouls here pretty quickly after the, after the initial trap. So Tabor basketball, 28.7 seconds remaining, about a three-second difference on the shot clock, but I mean, McPherson might hold. I, I, I take that back. With a three-second difference, they might try, they, well, I'm just the announcer, what do I know? <laughs> so Tabor will step to the line here. Braxmeyer picks up his, not quite sure. Proctor hits the first. So Proctor, a 75% free throw shooter. So certainly, uh, certainly who you'd like to see step to the line. So McPherson will take a timeout and it's a full timeout. So. We'll just take a 30 second timeout and be back with you here shortly. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Jake Proctor will have one more free throw as we come out of this McPherson timeout. Tabor with a two point advantage. And as you've heard me mention so many times here toward the end of the second half and in overtime, if you go back to the seven and a half minute mark of the second half, Tabor. Uh, so that would be about 12 minutes of basketball, just 12 points from McPherson, many of those coming from the free throw line. So Tabor's defense doing everything it can to try to pull off the upset win here tonight. A big free throw here for Jake Proctor, the six foot three freshman from just down the road in Heston. And hits both. So Coach Warren telling the Blue Jay fans to get on their feet. We'll see if Tabor can finish this one off. So McPherson, Rose looking to try to drive. He is cut off. Braxmeyer will take it to the lane and score. So 82-81. Tabor timeout. And it's a full, but we'll stay with you. So, whew. I might need a breather. <laughs> so, been fun. And uh, regardless of the results, certainly hope to see a Tabor W at the end of the night. But 
this game has delivered. There's no question about that. So Tabor will inbound the ball full court. And undoubtedly McPherson will put a press on to try to try to get a Tabor turnover. We'll see. Without question, we do not want to see that, but I know that's the obvious statement of the night. So get the ball in, get the ball up the floor, and try to get to the free throw line. I don't know whose voice might be more so <laughs> mine or Nate Howard's in PA. We'll have to talk to each other after the game. So here we go. Eight, about eight seconds left. We shall see what happens. See who we have on the inbound. Jack both inbounding the ball for the Blue Jays. And he will find McClure. And he will be fouled by Mabry. Exactly who you want to send to the line. Caleb Crane, also very good, but Thatcher McClure, Tabor's best top scorer, but a nearly 82% free throw shooter for the season. Need, gotta have one, certainly would like to. There it is, so Tabor with the two point lead. I would venture to guess we might see a foul from Tabor if this goes to three points, which it does. So try to foul here before McPherson can get a shot off. 84-81 Blue Jays. Braxmeyer with the three. He misses. A huge win for Tabor. 84-81 Tabor win the overtime victory so just four days after mcpherson knocks off number six southwestern Tabor takes down the visiting bulldogs who came in with a seven and one record on the road and an 11 and three record overall massive massive win for Tabor. coach warren just on top of on cloud nine here cheering on his guys this is this is the win that might just propel Tabor forwards. We certainly hope so. So we'll take a final look at the stats here in tonight's game. McClure with 21 points and nine boards to lead all Tabor scores. Caleb Crane with 19. Jack Voth with 15. Kenyon Holcomb, who had to sit for the better part of the overtime with 15 points and 10 rebounds in the double-double. So in double figures, that's McClure with 21, Crane with 19, both with fit, Crane with 19, both and Holcomb with 15, Store with a double, another double double, 26 points, 11 rebounds, 12 from Rose, 11 for Watson, 10 for Collins, and 10 for Mabry. So with that victory, Tabor moves to six and nine overall, three and six in conference play, getting its second home conference win. McPherson will fall to 11 and four and six and three in conference play. Just its second road loss of the season. Whew. So, well, that was fun. So signing off here, Tabor, Tabor Blue Jay fans. Hope you enjoyed that one. We'll, uh, we'll see what the next game brings us. So Adam Suderman saying good night for the final time here. Tabor wins 84, 81 in overtime. Have a great night, everybody. Marzicek is exceptional at his uh, vertical defending. He kicks that one off and fits.